My name is Grace Kiyako and I'm a research scientist from the National Museums of Kenya. People normally ask me why do you study spiders? Well, the answer that comes to mind is they're your friends. They help you in uh, controlling the pests. If you have a spider at home, it will eat that cockroach that is harmful to you. If you have a spider in your home, it will help you in controlling those uh, pesky other insects that are home like mosquitoes. We have a spider that has actually been described from Kenya and it's been collected from Bita in Lake Victoria. And this spider specifically feeds on the female Anopheles mosquito. I'm an arachnologist and many people would wonder what is arachnology. This is just the study of, uh, study of arachnids uh, and these are animals with eight legs and two body parts. My motivation to study in China was very simple. They were offering a course I was really interested in. They had the expertise because uh, I wanted to focus mostly on spiders and they had the expertise of spider experts, you know. So it was very easy for me to just go into a lab, get the information that I needed, you know, in terms of uh, help with my research. I was offered a scholarship, a full scholarship. So this means it covered my education, which was my coursework. It covered my research and it also gave me an opportunity to get like a stipend. So it was very easy for me to just settle down and just get to do my studies. I remember when I finished my campus, I came to the National Museums of Kenya and I was attached here at the section. I interacted with so many experts dealing with different groups of species, different group of animals. And from there then I found out that we have an, a niche and that needed to be filled. We had like a gap and the gap was in terms of arachnid expertise. So from there I think it just piqued my interest. I started looking at spiders, their physical characteristics, the environment they live in, their importance. From just studying them it piqued my interest because they are very interesting species to look at. So part of the work we do at the National Museums of Kenya is we are the custodians of the national collection. And what that means is we preserve the collection for future posterity. Uh, the collection is very old. One of the oldest collections we have is this drawer here. It is a drawer of uh, beetles that were collected from Tanganyika in 1889. So this is more than a century back actually. And uh, this is very important because it's a reference collection. And by reference collection, I mean it's a way of people in future to know what we had back in the day and what we have right now. And it's a very good way of telling uh, matters of conservation of species in terms of climate change and what has changed in the environment in terms of species. For the dry collection, we dry them in the oven for like maybe at that 70 degrees Celsius for maybe three to four days. Uh, and then after you dry them, you kind of uh, dry the liquid so it stops the decomposition process. Uh, back in the day, we normally used the naphthalene balls, uh, but we're trying to move to a more uh, health conscious chemical, camphor, which is plant-based. China, it's very research intensive when it comes to, you know, uh, research. They're very focused, uh, they have state-of-the-art laboratories, their government is very supportive of their research. Part of my project involved a lot of molecular work, so when it comes to getting the ingredients and everything for my, you know, uh, like uh, the materials for my research, they were very supportive in terms of the, my, my project, so it was, it was an easy decision for me to just go to China. So the institution I went to was the uh, Institute of Zoology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. What I liked about them is the fact that they are a renowned university in the world, so they have very good uh, studying when it comes to ranking in the world. I was able to interact with people who are experts in the area. Specifically, the lab I was attached in where we had experts that were arachnologists and specifically spiders. So it was very important for me because I got to understand part of the work we normally do here, we are the custodians of uh, the national collection. So we have the repository of the, the country and we are the custodians of this collection. So part of the work that we normally do is intensive taxonomy. So I was able to interact with experts in the field and they were able to teach me about the taxonomy of spiders. Part of the things we normally do is we have like a data card for the species. So like the data card basically it has 
the species name, the location it is collected. So this one was collected in Kwara, Tana River. And then the, if you can get the coordinates, then that's fine. Uh, some of the classes that I really enjoyed was basic Chinese. One thing you have to understand is you can never get around in China unless you understand the language. Literally everything, uh, the restaurants, the stations, if you want to ask directions. So part of the coursework that we did was learning Chinese. And it was an interesting class because uh, we learned Chinese like the same way kids learn ABCD. <laughs> We were like a class, I think, of like 28 international students. And I remember the teacher used to come to class, especially for the first time, and we were kind of learning the alphabet in Chinese, you know, the same way we learned in nursery school. So we had a class on the Chinese culture, whereby we learned everything about it from the dynasty era to the present system they have, the cultures, why they do what they do. And it was very interesting to just get immersed in the Chinese culture in that way. But I think one of the cultural practices I liked about China is their celebration. They love celebrating. And when they celebrate, they normally call people for like a meal. So our supervisors, whenever we had like maybe some good things to celebrate, or maybe it was like at the end of the year, he used to call us, we used to go for a meal. And then I'm a foodie, so I love food. <laughs> so the, the food was very interesting to learn. Uh, they do have a different cooking style. We have different things that they normally cook. And so it was just, interesting to experience their food diversity. You kind of have this hot pot kind of setting. It's like a pot with uh, water and then you add the spices, you add the salt, you, and then you're provided with like a raw array of foods and then you kind of cook as you, you know, as you're eating. The Chinese people normally have like a nap after lunch. So immediately they come from lunch, they like nap for like maybe one or two hours, <laughs> one hour or 30 minutes, and then, you know, uh, they go back to their, doing their, their, their duties. So at some point I kind of adapted to that because the moment you kind of take that break, it's like they call it a mental break. You take like a mental break and then in the afternoon you become very productive. But part of the, you know, bargaining skill that we actually asked our teachers to teach us was saying, I'm a student, can you lower the cost? I don't have money. <laughs> so that was the phrase that we used to say a lot. You know, you get to the market and you're like, I'm a student, can you, you know, lower the price? Give me a discount. So it was interesting to really just experience this journey. Of course, it has its ups and downs, but I think uh, if I were to do it all over again, I think it's an experience I'd like to live, in, to live again, yeah.